If you want to learn how you can edit art tutorials, speed paints, time lapses, then in today's video, I'm going to share with you my process for editing art videos using a free editing software. So in order to begin editing your art video, there's a few things that you're going to need. One, you're going to need a camera or phone or whatever it is that you are filming with and then you're going to need something to edit on. I'm going to be editing on my laptop because it's going to give me a lot more options than it would be on my phone. So obviously the first thing you're going to need to do is film your footage for your video. So this typically would include shots of you creating your artwork, but also maybe footage of yourself if you're trying to explain something that's more of a tutorial based video, or you're using like a face cam for your narration for your speed paint or tutorial, whatever it is that you're doing. I use a mixture of the two. So I use footage of my artwork combined with footage of myself narrating, but I'll get to that later on. If you'd like to know how you can record your desk to record your artwork, then I actually already have a video on this. It is a few years old and I do look a lot younger, but um, actually one of the techniques that I show in that video is actually basically what I still use now for recording my top down view. So if you want to know how you can film your videos before you edit them, then I'll leave a link to that video in the card above and in the description below. Okay, so let's get straight on with the editing. Okay, so once you've actually got your footage, it's now time to bring it into your editing software. So the software I'm going to be using is DaVinci Resolve. Now this is a free editing software and it may look slightly intimidating at first, but really it's actually pretty user friendly and it's not that difficult to navigate. And it's got so much capabilities that you can do so much cool stuff with it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is in this first page here, so you can see we have these little tabs along the bottom. Now the only main two that we're gonna look at is this first one and this third one. So for this first one, this is where we're gonna import our media. So what I like to do is if I right click, I can then add a bin. And basically this is just a folder. So I'm gonna call this my art footage. Okay, so that's gonna have all of the clips from my art in. Now I'm also gonna create just a few more so I can then put different things in later so I can really keep everything organized. Okay, so I'm going to begin by importing my art footage. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of the footage that is of me creating the art. And I'm simply just going to drag that into that folder. You just want to click change. And there you go. So the footage that I'm actually going to be using for this video is um, my footage from last week's video. So my last week's video was redesigning uh, the Midsummer movie poster. So if you'd like to check that video out again, I'll leave a link in the cards and in the description below. But I'm just going to be using that footage um, as an example for how I would edit my videos. So we then want to come over and we want to come over into this edit tab, which is the third one across. And this is where we're going to start actually editing and piecing everything together. So the very first thing I do is I take all of my footage and I put them in chronological order. Because filming art takes a long time, often what happens is my camera will just split it up into chunks automatically and split it into separate clips. So I sort of want to piece them together. And also what I've done here is I've recorded some extra camera angles. I have my Canon 700D, which I use for the top down shot. And then I use my phone to record some kind of close up angles from the side to add a bit more variation. Okay, so as you can see, I've imported in all of my art footage. <laughs> as you can see currently, this um, is currently three hours long, <laughs> over three hours long. So obviously we don't want that long a video. Now, as you can also see, because of the way that I film my videos from the top down, what you get is the uh, footage is actually upside down when you import it. So what we need to do is we need to flip it around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of the clips and come over to this bit on the side. Now, if this isn't um, open when you look, it's this un inspector. So you wanna click on inspector and you can see rotation angle. We just wanna double click in the box 
and we want to put 180 to flip it so it's the right way round. Now that everything is imported into DaVinci and we've put it in the right order, the next thing, the next couple of steps are interchangeable. So you can do in whichever order you like. Preferably what I like to do is I like to record my narration and my voiceover to go with the video before I speed it up. Now, I know some people like to speed it up first and then do the narration, but what I find is that if I do my commentary beforehand, that then means that I can then match better what's happening with the visuals to what I'm saying. Whereas if you were to um, do your voiceover afterwards, you have to try and rush everything you're saying to fit it to the sped up clips. This is completely up to you. Personally, I like to use a face cam. So recently what I've been doing is inputting my face in the corner of the screen and having that as a narration because I think it's a bit more interesting. But if you want to, you can literally just use a regular voiceover narrator, uh, narration. It's completely your call. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import my footage. So again, just like before, I'm gonna select all of my face cam footage and I'm gonna drag it into my face footage folder, okay? We go back to the edit tab and you can see here, here are our bins on the side. So you just wanna click on face footage and that's where all of it is or wherever you're keeping it. Just like before, what we wanna do is we wanna put them in order. For the time being, I'm just going to overlay them on the clips we've already got, but I'll sort that out. I'll sort that all out later on. Okay, so now you can see what I've done is I've just imported um, the face cam footage, and I've done it on the next layer above the original art footage. So what I'm actually going to do is by clicking this button here, I'm just going to disable the um, the art footage layer so I can work just easier um, on the footage. Now this will work exactly the same if you're just doing a narration, um, it's just that mine is voice and visuals, but to be honest it doesn't really make a difference to the next steps. So using this slider here I'm just going to zoom in. The way I do my speech is that I'll say a bit, I'll pause and then I'll think about what I'm going to say and then do the next bit. So as you can see what I need to do is I need to trim out all the pauses. And the way that I do this is you literally just go to the point where you want your clip to start. So I'm going to go just before I start speaking here. You can use the arrow keys, the right and left arrow keys to move frame by frame either side. And you can see I'm just about to speak. So then what I'm going to do is you can use the control or command if you're on a Mac and B and that splits the clip. Alternatively, if you come here, you can see this little blade tool and again, you can just hover over the clip and then just click and it will split it. Once you have split the clip, to delete it, you can either just hit delete and it will just get rid of it and there'll still be a gap there. However, if I just go back, if you hold your tab key and hit delete, it ripple deletes it. So basically it will then move everything forward to fill in the gap. I literally just go through and once I finish speaking, I'll then control B, make sure that you are selecting the clip that you want to uh, split because otherwise it will just split everything that's in your timeline. And I just go through and cut out all of the pauses until I get my full narration in place. Now this process takes a very long time so I'm not going to show it all for you because it's just very repetitive and the exact same thing. So I'm just going to take a portion of my voiceover um, and narration and show you what I do with that basically. Okay, so now that I've cut out all the pauses, basically, what I now need to do is I need to speed up the art footage to match with the face cam footage. Now, my computer's slightly struggling a bit because I'm recording my screen at the same time. Um, so I've gotten rid of some of the art clips. Um, so there's not as many to work with, but it's the exact same process. You just repeat it for all of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unhide 
the footage, the art footage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it all. So you can just drag and select. And I'm actually going to right click. And I'm going to click new compound clip. Now you can name it. So I'm just going to call it art. And it basically just groups them all together. And we're going to see how long our face cam footage is. So just clicking on the timeline at the end, it is two minutes and 11 seconds. Okay, so we then want to select the art compound clip. It's all in one. And again, we want to right click and we want to go to change clip speed. Once you click on that, you can see the percentage, the frames per second and the duration. Currently, it's on 52 minutes and 23 seconds, but we want it to be 2 minutes 11. So you can see the little arrows come up once you hover over the speed and you literally just want to increase the speed. So we're coming up to two minutes 11 and you just want to click change. And as you can see, what it's now done is if I hide the above layer, my computer is lagging a bit because it's struggling slightly with the recording at the same time. But what it's done is it sped up the clip. And it's now the same length as our face cam footage or narration, whatever you're choosing to do. Okay, so now that we've got our art sped up, if you just want to leave it there and you've got your narration and your art sped up, then you're done, basically. But I'm going to show you the few kind of little artistic extra bits that I add on to help kind of make my art more visually interesting. Um, because currently, and the way that YouTube has kind of developed, people have very short attention spans. So, and a lot of people don't necessarily just watch speed paints anymore. So you need to kind of come up with ways that you can make things more visually interesting so people actually stay on your video. The first thing I'm gonna do about that is I'm actually gonna add my face cam footage in a smaller part in kind of the corner, like you see with many videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my face cam footage, which is on the layer above. And again, come back over to the inspector and down to cropping. You want to double click on that. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to crop the video in because we don't need all of the yellow background on either side. And there's our crop video. If we then come back up to transform and you can see under zoom, if you go over the first one, so the one next to the X and you drag, click and drag left and right, you can actually adjust the sizing. So I want to make my face cam kind of obviously smaller. So I think about 400, 410 would work. And then if you come down the, to the position, again, the X, moves it on the X axis, so left and right, and the Y moves it up and down. So I want to put my face cam in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm just going to use these tools and I'm just going to click and drag until I get it aligned on the X axis and then down on the Y axis just like that. And if you want to leave it like that, then that's completely fine. What I like to do to my videos is I actually like to sort of add a border. And um, so it kind of crops everything in a bit because it just kind of makes it a bit more sort of artistic. So what I actually created PNG image, which is the same size as the video. So I'm recording 1080p, so 1920 by 1080 pixels. And I'm just going to import that into my external folder. And as you can see, it's just a PNG with a white border, which I just made in Photoshop. Now I'm going to extend this to the size of the whole video. See, now we have this white border. Now to me, this just makes it a bit more visually interesting. As you can see, it's actually covered up our face cam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the um the face cam layer so you can click and drag like i showed or you can also individually select clips by holding command or control and just clicking on all of the clips oh, on all of the clips that you want to use i'm going to move it one above the border but now i think what i want is i'm just going to shrink it 
slightly just so there's a bit more of a white border around the outside it just looks a bit cleaner and I'm just going to adjust the positioning slightly and there you go and to me that just seems a bit more sort of purposeful and artistic we're going to come back to our art compound clip now what we're going to do is we're going to spice it up a bit more by actually adding in some crops and some zooms okay um, again this just adds a bit more visual intrigue so what you can do is say that we want the camera to sort of pan from left to right even though that we actually filmed this on a static image it's just one straight shot so what we're going to do is we're going to come to the first point where you want the camera to move so i'm going to come in a bit further about here and we're going to come back over to our transform inspector panel on the side here and i'm actually going to zoom in slightly and I'm going to move the footage over to the left. Okay, then you can see that this little kind of diamond shape is actually a keyframe. Now keyframes can be slightly complicated, but this is a very simple way to use keyframes. And you just want to click it. Okay, and now you can see that they've turned red. You then want to go to the point in which you want your kind of camera pan to stop. So I'm just going to go a bit further on um, once more of the lip is done, let's say about here. And then you just want to adjust your settings like we did before, but where you want it to end up. So I'm actually going to drag it the other way to about there. It's now turned red because you've placed another keyframe automatically because you've changed what you want it to do. You can see that it's actually moving across. If I just scrub across, that's probably better. You can see that it's actually moving. So it looks like we've used some sort of slider or dolly. And you can do the same with that. So you can go from left to right, you can zoom in and out. And it's the same principle if you just either use the position tools or the zoom tools and it just adds a bit more kind of visual interest. You can do that with the face cam footage or if you're filming an art tutorial and it's just you speaking, just like what I'm doing here. You can also cut and you can zoom in. Um, so what I'll show you uh, with one of the face cam footage is that if I just bring it out here and what I'm gonna do is if you kind of aren't happy with any of the kind of choices that you've made, what you can do is you can simply click the little reset button, which will reset everything and reset cropping. So imagine I'm filming an art tutorial on the, and, and I'm editing it like this, and I want to add a few crop-ins because you know that's very popular and it kind of keeps people more um, interested. What you can do is you can go to the point where you want to crop in, and again, like before, Control B or Command B and split the clip. And then the second clip, what you want to do is you want to go up to your zoom and you just want to zoom in slightly and there you go so you are talking at first and it's kind of in one area and it's kind of in a wide shot and then it crops in you can do this to bring emphasis on things that you're saying but it's quite a good thing to do because one it keeps people more engaged and it looks more kind of professional because it looks like you're shooting with two cameras when you're actually only shooting with one now what we've got is we've got our sped up art video, we've got our narration and we've kind of played around and positioned things to make it a bit more interesting and we've added in some crops in, some croppings and some zooms. For this one, what I actually ended up doing was I used the reference photo and I imported that and I put that in the video as well. So again, just like before, just like the border, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the image and I'm going to drag it in and again, you can extend it to however long you want it to be and then adjust using the zoom and you can move that around to wherever you want it. So let's just say I'm going to put this in the in the top right instead. Now, see here, we've got it underneath the border, which I quite like. Um, however, you can also do what we did before and just bring it on the track above the border and above your face cam. So you can have it overlap the border, which I also equally like. So let's just leave it like that. And you can do that with 
any images or other videos that you wanna incorporate. Let's come to another point in the video and say we wanna add some text. We wanna come up to the top here to the effects library and you wanna click on that. You then wanna click on text and you wanna drag that onto your timeline like so. You want to click on it and select it and as you can see our inspect over here has changed. You can then simply just type in whatever you want um, and you can choose whatever font you want. I quite like using Time Machine Roman and then here again you can adjust the size and if you come further down you have the exact same position so you can change the X axis, axis yeah, I can't say it, axis and the Y axis just like before and there you go and then you can add in little bits of text as well and really that's the basis of how i edit my art videos i'm going to show you an optional step if you're feeling you know a bit more kind of brave in terms of adding in kind of little animated kind of writing and text but that involves a bit more work but it's still very simple but it just adds another extra element so what you're going to want to do is select the clip that you're going to apply these effects to and you're going to come over to the next kind of magic wand tab, which is the fusion tab. Already, this looks quite complicated. It's fairly basic. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come here and you can see this little paintbrush and you just want to click and drag that. And these are called nodes at the bottom. And it's basically a bit like the layers in the editing um, window, but it's just a slightly different format. This is the input on the left and this is the output on the right. So what you're going to want to do is you want to click and you want to drag and you want to pop it to the paint and then you want to go from this square to that triangle so you're just making it into the line okay now that we have selected our paint option and our node you can see again in the inspector on the side we have a few different options but just before you do you want to come up here and you want to click on this third one in called stroke if you click on brush controls you can adjust the size of the brush so you can see when I hover there, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this slightly bigger so we can see. You can see the size of the brush and you can adjust the softness. I like to put it on a zero softness um, and you can change the color here. I like to use white and then come down to stroke controls. You can actually animate things. So there's a right on effect, a right off and a trail effect. So a right on, basically all it does is say I was to draw some shape and I were to play it back it would write it on just like that. Now, if I get rid of that, write on then off is fairly self-explanatory. It writes it on. Sorry, my computer is struggling a bit and then it writes off. So, you know, very self-explanatory. The other one that I like to use is called a trail, which say I was to draw a line like that. it creates that sort of effect, which is also quite interesting. So I use these to sort of spice up and add little sort of strokes of sort of light or to write my name at the beginning of the videos is what I like to do. Um, just to kind of bring a bit more visual intrigue and you can put them in throughout your video. And that's sort of like the final sort of visual editing that I like to do. And then simply what I like to do is if I go back to my media pool um, and if I go into audio, I like to import some music. So I like to find my music on SoundCloud um, normally, or maybe the YouTube music library. Once you've got your track, again, just like before, you come down into the audio tracks, the green ones, and you can just drag it in, just like you do with the video. And then you can come over to these mixes on the side, and as you can see, it's in audio too. And then you can just click and pull that down, and that way the music will be quieter so we can still hear what you're saying over the top. And really, that's how I edit my videos. I add the music last, that's my final step. No, it's not. So basically this is future Nick here um, who is editing this video and I've realized that there's actually a couple of things that I wanted to show you which I just didn't. Um, and one of them is how to actually export the video. So it's quite important. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to adjust some of the colours and kind of contrast and levels and things like that because like my footage here, the top down footage of the artwork, it's quite pale and so I want to bring back some of the contrast. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over 
to this tab at the bottom, you can see there's a little color wheel and this is the color tab and this is what it looks like. Now, it may look slightly complica complicated, especially with the kind of scopes over here, but don't worry too much. It's actually very simple. The first thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to the top here and click on clips. Then it brings up this tab here, which is basically just shows you all of the clips that you have in your timeline, whether you have different layers, every single clip um, that you have on your timeline is showed here. So you wanna make sure that you've selected the clip that you want to edit. So for me, it's this compound clip, remember, art. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to this section down here. Now you can use the curves tool um, which is basically the same to how you'd use it in Photoshop. Um, but what I like to do is come over to this third tab here, which is the color wheels. And over here on the scope section, if this one isn't showing, you want to make sure that you click on waveform. It might already be on histogram, in which case waveform is the most helpful um, to me anyway. So over here on the color wheels, we have lift, gamma and gain and offset. What I want you to think of this is as lift is the shadows, gamma is the midtones, and gain is the highlights and offset is everything. So if we come down to these little wheels beneath, what we can do is if we scrub along, you can see that the shadows are getting darker and you can see over here on the scopes that the shadows are moving down. Now the way to think about this is that you want to move it down until the scopes and the waveform is just above zero. So I think about there is good. And then if we come up to the gain, you can do the same and it's making it brighter. And for this, you want it just below the top of the waveform, top of the, uh, top of the chart. You see, like that. So it's very simple and that way we have more of a kind of evenly balanced exposed image. What you can also do is if you come to these little circles in the middle, you can click and move them towards different colours and this is what will go into your shadow. So say you wanted really blue shadows, you could move the circle towards the blues and the closer to the middle, the less strong or less kind of concentrated the colour is and the closer to the edge, the more concentrated or saturated the colour is. So you could add more blues to the shadows if you wanted to, you could add more sort of oranges to the highlights if you wanted to, you can just have a complete play around and see what works well for you. So that's basically how you can do some colour adjustments. Also, if you come down to the bottom here, you can see you have contrast, so you can up the contrast, you can decrease the contrast, just like that. You have saturation, so you can up the saturation, you can decrease the saturation. You have hue, which adjusts the whole hue of the image. A lot of these features basically work exactly the same as Photoshop. And if you come over here to the second tab, you actually have temperature, so you can adjust the color temperature, making it warmer or cooler, depending on how your original footage was captured. So just have a play around with it. And there are tons and tons of videos on YouTube that will explain everything that I've gone through in more detail if you're not sure. Things on color grading, um, things on all of the editing uh, stuff that I showed you, the things in the Fusion tab, the animation. Literally just look on YouTube and there'll be so many more in-depth videos if there's one particular element you really want to learn more about. Okay, so now that we've done everything, um, we've done all of our editing, we now want to export it. So we come over to this very final tab, the Deliver tab, which is the little spaceship. So now we are on the Deliver tab, okay? So this is where we're gonna export our video. So you can come over here and file name, you can name it whatever you want. So I'm just gonna say Midsummer. And then you can browse and choose a location for where you want to save it. So I actually have made a folder called Midsummer. So I'm going to save it in there. Okay, so now that we've selected where we want to save it, to be honest, there isn't a lot you need to do with the settings. 
You want to make sure that your resolution is the same as what you filmed it at or whether you want to up the revolution. I export mine in 1020 by 1080 HD and typically I film at 24 frames per second although it might be 30. It, it just depends on what you're filming in and what your camera films in. Most phones film in 30 frames per second but on my DSLR I like to film in 24 frames per second. And to be honest all of these other settings you don't really need to pay much attention to. Um, and then you just click on add to render queue and it comes over here and you just click start render. And what will happen is it will literally just start rendering um, and then it will give you a time um, to see how long of the rendering you have left. And once it's rendered, it will save as a, I'm just gonna stop that because I've already saved it before. And once it's finished exporting, you'll see that it's come up in the folder and you can double click and you can play the video and there is your exported video ready to upload to YouTube. And so if you'd like to see how this video kind of turned out in the end, if you've watched my previous video, like I said, there'll be a link in the card and the description below. You can see how I used this footage and edited my video. Now, obviously, this takes quite a long time to do all of this. Um, so you just need to be patient with it. And the more kind of creativeness that you put into it, the better the video is going to come out. So just have a play with all the different things that I've shown you using crop-ins and zooms and speeding up your footage. And if you want to include any of the kind of writing animation or other videos and images as overlays or text, there's loads of things you can do all within this free software, which again, I'll link in the description below so you can check that out. I hope this video has been helpful for you uh, as an insight to how to film your own art videos. If you'd like to know how I film, physically film the video with my camera, my Canon 700D, I will, again, there'll be a link in the description and in the card for the video on how I film my art videos. And yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up because it, I really appreciate it. And leave a comment below telling me, do you prefer to use a face cam or do you prefer to use a narration? I think either works really well, but I'm interested to see what you think. If you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing for weekly art, film and photography videos every Sunday. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week with another video. Bye.